So hello everybody, here we are back with another in the house unboxing and I, today I'm unboxing an older game called Runebound 2nd Edition uh, the expansion Insel des Schreckens, which is um, Island of Dread, I believe, in the English um, version. So, um, Runebound Second Expansion is no longer in print, um, but it's one of my all-time favorite games. And for those of you who are going to say, yeah, but how does it compare to 3rd edition? I hear 3rd edition is so much better. I wouldn't be able to comment because I haven't even looked at 3rd edition. I'm also not going to invest in 3rd edition because um, Runebound 2nd edition, I of course have the base game and I've got plenty of expansions for this one. So these are just um, some allies and um, cards and stuff. Then I've got more adventure cards for this one and even more adventure cards. Um, I've got um, adventure variants as well. So I've got the Scepter of Kairos, Avatars of Kelnoth, the Seven Scions, which all are small card um, pack it, it, um, expansions for the base game. Then I've got uh, the Drakes and Dragons Spawn Challenge card. Um, I've got the Terrors of the Tomb Challenge card expansion. I've got Item and Ally cards expansion, Artifacts and Allies. Weapons of Legend and the Walkers of the Wild. So I've got so many card expansions for the base game. I also have Sands of Kalim and I treated myself to the Island of Dread. The fact that it's in German shouldn't make any difference really because um, <clears throat> essentially what is important is that you can read the cards, which I would be able to because I speak German. Um, it comes with an expansion for the board, which you essentially place on the original runebound um, board. So you need the original runebound board. It comes with um, tokens because you're going to, I think. As far as I know, you're going to put together a treasure map. Um, it comes with hero minis, which are also, of course, language independent. Um, they are pretty much your normal Fantasy Flight games miniatures. They come in like, you know, you don't have to do anything with them. They are pretty decent. You could, if you wanted to paint them. I usually don't because I don't play against anybody else. So I just basically choose a random hero because um, in this game the enemies do not have miniatures, but they're little beads that you put on the on the on the map, so um, you will not be distracted. And of course, here we have the adventure cards, the challenge cards, um, instead of the normal green, red, um, blue, and yellow. Um, Enemy cards, um, I'm going to show you the ones from the base game. They have a dragon on the back. These ones actually have a little volcano on the back. So um, you can tell these apart. And they are basically the, the, the meat of the game because um, they will drive the story. Um, apparently it doesn't come with any item cards, so you really need those from the base game or from any other game that you may have. You can also mix in the, the expansions um, and that's essentially it. Um, for the actual game, um, I use beads instead of the adventure counters because I just prefer the beads there much lovelier but of course they make the game box a lot heavier as well and um, I also play with um, the Cities of Adventures um, expansions these are fan-made expansions which make it a little bit more flavorful once you reach a um, once you reach a city you then have um, based on um, the role of your movement dice, you can have different um, encounters, which sometimes make the, 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 the game a little more difficult, but sometimes they also contain 
Boon. So here is the City of Adventures for the base game. Then we have the one for the Island of Dread. And lastly, the one for the Sands of Al Kalim. Um, you can get these. And here I've got the um, solo rules based on um, Mr. Skeletor's variant. I believe that Mr. Skeletor um, left Board Game Geek a long time ago. Um, I also use this um, character sheet, if you like. So basically I place my character here. And then I just fill up the health um, track and I put down the information like, you know, um, if, if he gets any additional or she gets any additional um, uh, upgrades uh, when we level up. Um, it also gives you some information on um, the different types of objects that you can have um, and what the symbols mean. Um, so I think it's this is actually in German as well. I got it. I probably got it from Board Game Geek, although I don't recall when I downloaded it. It must have been years ago, um, probably ten years ago. Um, here I've got the so-called threat track, um, which I also downloaded from our Board Game Geek. Um, you basically choose your difficulty from twelve, which is very hard, to twenty, which is really easy. Um, and then you place a marker on the zero um, track. And then after all players have taken a turn, you add one doom counter to the tr threat track, um, uh, th to the threat pool down here. And then you um, roll 2d10 plus the doom counters. And if the number is greater than uh, the um, difficulty, you advance uh, the token one step. So if you place it at 17 and after the end of the first round, you put one threat pool um, item in here and then you roll 2d10 and you get um, 16 or less, you're good. If you get 17 or higher, then you move to one and you do the same the next, th and the next time, only you add one more um, <clears throat> token to the threat pool. So that's a really nice way of also making it a little more difficult because some people say that the game can drag on. I actually love it. I usually put it at 20 because I really like exploring and I really like seeing as many adventure cards as possible and also as many um, item cards as possible because I really enjoy um, the game and for me it's a, an, an epic journey really through... Oh look! It's the full catalogue from Fantasy Flight Games of 2007. That's almost an antiquity. It's 10 years old. Yeah, they still had the Midnight expansion, which I think didn't go down so well. A lot of people didn't like it. Oh, Dracula, Fury of Dracula, Warrior Knights. Twilight Imperium, yeah. It's quite interesting. I mean, I love looking at these because um, it's really interesting to see what was happening in the past and what people were playing. Mutant Chronicles, never heard of that one. So um, that's my latest acquisition. Um, a lot of people um, don't buy into dead games. Now, is this game dead? Well, to me it isn't because um, I think it's actually still got a huge following. A lot of people still play it. And um, I believe it's different enough from the third edition um, for people to not want to upgrade or to change editions um, like I said at some point um, you just have to make a decision what you want to do and I have plenty of I would call them lifestyle games that I'm invested in where I have to um, buy stuff for them where I have to invest to get the most recent stuff um, like uh, Lord of the Rings um, the card game the living card game so uh, I just have no interest in taking any other games um, and um, investing in them and building them up. And of course, uh, with Runebound, as you can see, even like the base game came with, you could buy three adventure variants that came as packs, as card packs. And there's the Sands of Alkaline, there is the Island of Dread, and then I think there is the Frozen Wastes, and I think there is one more big big board expansion so even then you could have invested a lot of money in this game and I did invest some money in it I didn't go all in I didn't buy everything but um, I just have no interest in investing in another 
game. So uh, third edition will not make it to my table simply because I'm not interested. I've got enough games and um, playing these is going to take me a long, long time. Um, so that's Roombound. I will probably do a playthrough, maybe even of um, Island of Dread. We'll see. But um, again, I play with a lot of house rules. Um, so, for example, in each market town, I have one stack for each type of market item. So I have one ally, weapon and armor, and magical item. So instead of just one card per market, I have I start out with three because I believe you can go to a town and then you go to the herbal shop where you get your magic, then you go to your armory and weapons shop where you can get your armor and weapons, and then you can go to um, the tavern where you can hire an ally. Why am I doing this? Well, a lot of people will go, yeah, well, but then you have so much um, you could choose from. Yes, indeed. But then again, I also have plenty of cards and I would like to see as many as possible. That doesn't mean that I win all the time. Most of the time I actually do not win because um, the dragons kill me. But um, I also uh, play soft knockout. So basically when, I, when I'm when i knocked out, I don't die, but I basically get sent to the nearest city where I'm fully healed. And the only thing I do is I lose my money and my allies. I keep my gear. Um, again, I think this is one of the games where you can have as many house rules as you like. You can have a really tough game. You can have a really leisurely game. But for me, it's really all about the traveling and all about the exploring. Um, then again, I watched um, a lonesome gamers playthroughs. And he does something really strange when he levels up because he always increases his stats by two. I don't do that, I only increase them by one, and when I increase a stat, I also cannot go back to um, the uh, previously played um, card level. So once I've, I've, I've um, increased my first stat, the green challenges are all gone, but I think he doesn't play it like that. I think he plays it slightly differently, so again, there's nothing wrong with this, but um, different people play it differently, different people prefer a different... I guess gaming experience and mine is one of true adventure and exploration but then again I do tend to play for three to four hours so um, if you want a quicker game of course you can play with hard knockouts and then die all the time. So that's all from me, Runebound, um, Insel des Schreckens, Island of Dread, um, no longer in print, you can still get the German version, I saw that on Amazon, that's where I got it, it wasn't that expensive either. Um, the other ones are unfortunately gone um, because it's no longer in print. But if you can get it, go for it because it is a very good game. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.